Good day and welcome to Law and Life Matters with me, Masavala Mutimele. We are on season two, episode one, and today we are joined by the current president of Sabo Alumni, Kululiwe Keswa. Just to give a short background of Kululiwe, she's a pupil, she's a pupil advocate at the Johannesburg Society of Advocates, Group 621 Advocates, and she's also an LLB graduate from the University of South Africa. Kuliliwe has gained 16 years experience in logistic and supply chain industry, working with companies such as Cargo National, Mbuzeni Transport, and the Freddie Hirsch Group. Kuliliwe, welcome to several Law and Life Matters. Kuliliwe, thank you so much for joining us. Welcome to Law and Life Matters. How are you today? I am very well. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Can you tell us a little bit about your career trajectory starting from the year 2004 up until you ended up in logistics and supply chain? Uh, yeah, so I matriculated in 2004 and I was home for um, two years. And then um, I got a job at a logistics firm as a data clerk in 2006. So um, while I was home, I've been trying to get into varsity and all of that stuff. But, you know, things just didn't work out well for some reason. So in 2006, I actually um, got accepted at varsity, but also um, had to get a job because within a short period of time um, my stepdad passed away so when I got a job I got it at the logistics company in uh, Denver south of Johannesburg so yeah uh, that's where my career in uh, logistics and supply chain started hmm, thank you very much um, that is very interesting and I'm sorry to hear about your stepdad passing away um, that's okay so how did you then from this start thinking about transitioning to law well, it wasn't immediate. Um, initially, the, the, the whole um, legal career was a joke between me and my dad. So um, I loved history in school. And I had this idea of, um, I want to be an economist. I want to be like Trevor Manuel, greatest dream ever. And, um, <laughs> but the whole idea of being like Trevor Manuel was that I want to be in parliament. I want to be the one making the laws. But I didn't understand at the time, I didn't know that there was a, a law degree. And one day my dad was coming from Namibia. He came back with um, the constitution, the little booklet. And he was like, well, if you wanna be a lawyer and lie to the whole country, here's a book. <laughs> it became a joke between us. So since then uh, I've had the constitution um, since I was 15 actually. So that's when he got me the book to say, okay, you wanna be a lawyer, you wanna lie to us? There you go. <laughs> so that, it became like a joke between the two of us. But ultimately, what I really wanted to do was um, be in the legal space, but didn't know exactly about the law degree until I was 15. Uh, when my dad introduced me to say, hey, by the way, you keep on saying that you want to be like Trevor Manuel and decide for the country and, and, and you'll have to do law um, and politics. But um, I'm not sure you're going to survive in politics. So you'll have to do law. Uh, and so it sort of stayed in my mind. Um, when I applied at university, I actually applied towards the line of uh, being an economist. And then um, in 2014, I decided that, you know, I've been in the logistics space. I've not been able to go back to school. The best thing that I can do is to just take a step and um, start looking after myself and following uh, my dream. So I started off um, researching and finding out what else can I do. And then um, at the time I then enrolled to do, in 2015, I enrolled to do procurement and supply chain. But in that, my whole target was to learn how to draft contracts. And one of the modules there was um, developing a contract, managing a contract and developing a business case. And it all had to, it was all centered around the public procurement um, framework. And that's where now all of this love was revived. Like, hey, listen, 
this is the direction that I wanted to go. This is so exciting. Where do I get this company law? Where do I get this PPFMA? Where do I get this? Where do I... And then slowly I started building up and um, started the move. And then in, in 2017, I took the plunge and enrolled for my law degree. Wow, that is very courageous. Um, so how did making the transition then change your life? Um, I'm happier. <laughs> that much I can tell you. Um, I, I feel like with the decision that I made, I, I, I am in my element. Um, I don't have to think twice about whether I want to wake up and talk law today. You know, um, that's now on the personal level. Um, on the professional level, it has put me in bigger places because when I enrolled for my law degree, I was then appointed as a national administrative manager. So it opened bigger doors. So I went from just being a demand planner to being appointed in even a bigger position. Um, so professionally, it has opened a lot of doors for me. Um, not only that, I mean, I got to be exposed to big law firms, um, got exposed to people who are ready and willing to assist young black women. And for the first time I experienced what it's like to moot internationally and soak in all these different cultures. And I feel like if I didn't take the step to, to do law and participate in everything that has to do with studying law, I would have been this exposed. I wouldn't be sitting here today. So professionally, it has changed my outlook on what being a professional is and what um, professional development means because I have lived it. So um, th there's that part that when you take a step to address certain things professionally, you then become the professional you want to see in others. And that's exactly what happened. Mm. Oh, wow. And so you sound like you're someone who's always constantly engaging in experience that will direct them to exactly where they want to go. And you, you also shadowed at a law firm but now you're a people candidate. So what do you understand to be the difference between the advocacy route and the candidate attorney profession? I mean, the, the attorney's profession. And how did you come to your decision to ultimately um, pursue a career as an advocate? So when I shadowed, um, I had an opportunity to see what goes on in a day of an attorney. I think uh, one of the people that were in the um, law firm that we had an opportunity to shadow was uh, the director of the law firm. And besides what you've been told uh, about what being a lawyer means, I got to see the stuff that people don't talk about. I got to see and understand um, why most of the time attorneys are always under pressure to perform because you have multiple clients that you have to be a shoulder to cry on all the time and must, most of the administrative work is left for you to do so if you are not um, well coordinated and, and structured you will fail in that field similarly um, as, a, as a pupil advocate you, you have people who are expecting you to know the law they're expecting you to be an expert in the field because they have not gained the necessary skill to, to tackle the problems. So my decision came from there. I wanted to understand why do you have to run to court every time? Why do you have to make sure that case files is updated correctly? Why do you have to chase a client to depose an affidavit? Why, 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 why? So in those whys, I got um, the reasons that helped me decide um, where I want to be. Now, everybody wants to be an expert in their field. And in my view, to be an expert in your field, you'd have to expose yourself to weakness. And I think I had done um, enough to, to make myself vulnerable to the mercy of other people in order to learn. So I took the advocacy route because of um, it, its toughness and the prospects of, of what it will it'll bring me, the type of fulfillment as a professional that I will get. But over and above that, it was the issue of, I love um, the law. 
and I want to practice the law at a certain level. And at that level, I'll need to be an advocate first before I can get to that level. So ultimately, I want to be an arbitrator or a judge. So to get there, I need to eat, breathe, speak, and sneeze law. You know, that's the type of life that I need to live. Now, if I were to start as, as an attorney, I'd have much higher leaps and, and bounds and hurdles to cross. But if I just take a plunge and go straight to advocacy, then I gain more exposure. Uh, more time in the bar means more prospects of getting to be an arbitrator or a judge. Mm. Interesting perspective. So on your way to becoming an arbitrator or a judge, um, what mm. practice areas are you currently most interested in? Commercial law. Money, 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 guys. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm very interested in um, trade and investment, um, trade and investment law, um, in as far as um, investor state um, disputes are, are concerned or investor state contracts, um, treaties and, uh, and, and stuff like that. So international law, um, trading investment in 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 a international scope. Um, that's that's basically my area of interest. But while I'm here, I take everything and anything that comes my way so that I can learn. Because there's other skills that you learn, even from as simple as moving an application to the CCMA, because that's where you get to to see what happens on the ground. Mm. And which advocates inspire you and why? Wow. <laughs> now that's a question. Sure. Um, it's actually not even an advocate. Um, um, he's an attorney and um, he's just made partner. Um, Jonathan Ripley Evans. Um, so he's my biggest inspiration because he is a, a picture of who I want to be as a professional in this field. Um, the reason for, for, for that is that while we are professionals, we also need to remember that we are human and we need to be able to give of ourselves and um, carry others through the process who want to be like us, who aspire to be like us. Um, this is not a selfish profession and that's what I saw with him. He is a selfless professional um, I've known him since 2020 and then I've not even been um, looking at other professionals. I was just focused on getting the degree and making sure that I expose myself um, enough to, to know what's happening out there. And when, when we met him to be our coach at a moot, a foreign direct investment moot, which is an international moot, he was ready, came guns blazing ready to take us on, ready to make sure that we get to the globals. And we got to the globals. And that was the nice thing about him and he's never severed those ties. To this day, if I were to call Jonathan today with a legal problem, he'll definitely answer the phone, definitely come back to me. It doesn't matter whether it's immediately or two days later, but he will definitely make time to answer your question and make sure that he contributes to your growth. So to him, what I see from him is that um, there's always questions to be answered and I have to make sure that I have the answers for the people that ask the questions and always be ready to help, always be ready to share your knowledge, um, invite people to, to your side, whether it's, it's in politics, the, the legal system, whatever the case may be, but invite people to your side and to get them there is for you to open your doors. Mm. Yo, it's, I think, thank you for that answer. I think it's great to have um, people that you can look up to. They give us something to strive for and they also help us in how we grow as well. That's very yeah. interesting. And so you're also the current president of Savile Alumni. And so I just yeah. want to find out what is being the president of that organization I mean, the, yeah, the alumni organization mean to you? Um, leadership and responsibility. Um, 
one thing we don't usually talk about, we, we um, generally, we are excited about the titles, mm. but nobody talks about what happens behind the scenes. What happens behind the scenes is taking a lot of accountability, a lot of responsibility for other people's decisions, be it in exco, be it um, um, alumni as a whole. When people say things on social media, I remember, I don't know who posted what, and somebody said to me, oh, I saw one of your sub alumni posting something. And I'm like, can people joke anymore? So that's when I realized that it's, it's not only that, it's the, the title becomes your personality, so to speak. The, the more accountable a person you are, then it, it's going to be easy for you to occupy any position of leadership. Um, if you allow yourself to be corrected, if you allow yourself to be vulnerable, if you allow yourself to be taught, have a teachable spirit, because that's what it is. When you are up there, you are more learning than doing. That's what, that, that's what happens most of the time, because there's a certain level of professionalism that is expected from you. But behind that, there's a very young, vulnerable girl that is like a sponge and just ready to soak and learn. And, you know, I learn a lot. I, I, I learn a lot from, from the founder. Um, I learn a lot from the directors that I interact with. Just little conversations, you, you know, they make sure that a five minute conversation sets you up for the next five years or 10 years because the lesson that you're going to learn is invaluable. So that's what it means to me. It means I have access to information. It means I have um, the responsibility and accountability of everybody that falls under the banner. Um, it means that I, I am the image before I am myself. I am the image of that organization because I mean, typical example, I, I came for an interview at the JSA and just before the interview ended, it's like, you are a president of several. And I was like, yes. Wow. Okay. How's that going? So immediately you are attached to a credible organization. The expectation is that also you are also credible. So it, it carries a lot of weight, but it also carries a lot of lessons in short. Yeah. Mm. Thank you so much. Uh, I think one of the things that um, you've just shared with us that really is going to stay with me is the fact that when you're up there, you're more learning than you are doing. And I think that also to the ethos of what Sabo is about as well. Um, exactly. Yeah. So um, what is next um, um, after becoming the president and going forward in your pupilage journey? What do you hope to ultimately achieve? Well, I have more young girls under my banner. Currently, um, I am a student tutor um, and I started doing that through several, through the body to body um program that was started by our former deputy president, Nolazim Lalazi. Um, kudos to her. I, I love the program. I get to meet very, very talented and smart young women who just need a nudge to the right direction. And I am still doing that. Um, even outside the banner of several, I have students that approach me to say, listen, I need help. So that is going to stay with me for a very long time. Uh, and then just building my practice, building my 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 image as a, as a legal practitioner. Um, but ultimately, I I hope to see myself on one of the chairs at the ICC, International Criminal Court. <laughs> and you know, um, hopefully, <laughs> yeah, hopefully I become one of those judges that go on the record for. Some commercial crimes, there's a, there's a lot that, that happens out there when we are sleeping and the law is just for that. Mm. Thank you so much. I hope our viewers will get as much as they can, as, my, as many lessons and inspiration as they can from this interaction. Thank you for your time and all the best with the rest of your presidency and pupilage chair. Thank you so, so much for having me and thank you to your viewers. Oh, <laughs>